Hey there, everybody, or shall we say bonjour to our Must Your Spade Season 1, Episode 1 reaction and review. Welcome to France, everybody. Welcome to a very appalling end to the first episode <laughs> of this show. Crazy. I mean, I was really excited when I heard that they were doing a Sam Spade show. I really love the Maltese Falcon. I really love Humphrey Bogart. And Clive Owen, I mean, he's the modern day Humphrey Bogart. He's the perfect person to be playing Sam Spade, and he did not disappoint. No, this show is great. Like, the first episode, I think it's really outstanding. They did exactly what I would want a noir series to sort of do, which is establish the character, give us a long list of suspects. And it's a pretty long list at this point. Oh, yeah. We have a crime that we're all going to try to analyze. I mean, this is really going to be a show for the amateur sleuths and all of us. Like, we want to hear your guys' theories about this over the course of the show, and we certainly have many that we are bringing to the table as well. Oh, absolutely. We have theories galore, suspects galore. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Jessica Bun Bun. This is Matt Rose. So hey. we hope that you will stick around and enjoy some of these theories. Share your theories with us by hitting that subscribe button. That way you don't miss any of our Monsieur Spade reviews that we're going to be have coming up also true detective we yeah. are also covering that here at the channel as well so hit that subscribe button okay i i recognize that there is a lot of backstory there's a lot of things about sam spade that we are going to dive into over time throughout this video here's some of the background of this we have run into sam spade many years later after <laughs> the maltese falcon he had remarried he lost his wife and now he's just retired living in france and he was brought to fit to france by bringing Teresa there where bridget's last request was please bring my daughter to france and you know have her be with her family and the grandmother's like nope i don't know who this is you know philip is a bit of a rake so you know he's got lots of women this might be his kid this might not be his kid slams the door yeah we have sam spade then being like well i don't really know what to do so he brings Teresa to this convent and was is like i don't know what to do i i tried they're not having it uh will you guys take her and you know mother superior is like of course, our door is open. Welcome, Teresa, who is really unhappy being there. We yes. catch up with her many, many years later. She's almost 15 now. She's about to come into a wildly huge trust fund set up by her mom, who, from the Maltese Falcon, also here, she's a thief. Philippe, also a thief. So we have two thieves that had a, you know, a couple big, really heist got all this money and her mother decided you know what philippe is not going to give this money to our kids so i'm going to just funnel it all the way into this trust before she ended up dying and now Teresa is not that far off from coming into that money so philippe is like hey grandmother's like would you like me to knit you a sweater like everybody's kind of circling around Teresa. We have to set the table here by announcing the main course. And the main course is all the uh, all the nuns are dead. Like, that's, that's the jaw dropper at the end of this episode. This is not just like a one murder victim case. This is a several murder victim case. Absolutely. And they're all sort of set up as this like murderous tableau of art. So, I mean, and like we said, there is a lot of suspects. <laughs> on this already we've been introduced to a lot of people which you know makes it a lot more fun my my biggest beef is that this season's only six episodes long and for like this many suspects and this rich of a storyline i'm really surprised we're only getting six episodes yeah i would have been i would have been great with like eight maybe yeah. ten yes. i know you know, this premiere was, I think, a little bit over an hour. Can mm -hmm. the rest of these episodes be like an hour 15? Because then it will feel like we're getting, you know, larger than six episodes. But okay, let's further now kind of establish everything else that's going on at the scene of the crime. We've already set the table. Let's accent the table a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So we have the story that has been presented to us via Teresa, who is Bridget's daughter, who Bridget is from the Maltese Falcon. We'll get into that a little bit more as mm -hmm. we go along. But according to her, what happens here is that Philippe, who 
has certainly been established throughout this show as a rather shady individual. Who is her father. He departed the scene. And then comes a monk who has a hood and is very mysterious, has a big nose, a kind of ugly face. You know, don't don't shame this monk's appearance, Teresa. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So this monk shows up, apparently gets into it with Mother Superior. And then after all of this, Teresa flees the scene. That is sort of the establishing of what happens there. However, Teresa did not actually see, per Teresa, the murders that took place here. And neither did any of the children who were all locked away. Here's the thing about Teresa. Is she reliable as a witness or as what's going on? Because the biggest thing here is that it feels like Teresa's a bit of a red herring. This whole like, oh, is it about the money? Is it about the trust fund? Because, you know, we'll be honest, we've seen the trailer for the whole season. And it's it seems like from the trailer, and trailers can be a little misleading, mm -hmm. that it's really about a boy, a young boy that everybody's trying to get their hands on. It's not really about Teresa. So because we had seen the trailer, we're watching the show, it's like, okay, there's no boy that's mentioned in this premiere. It's all about Teresa. Is it, you know, she's doesn't have a great relationship with Sam's baby because he kind of just dumped her off and like, you know, he's been back to donate money and stuff, but she's like, you locked up my mom. You sent my dad away. Like, uh, no love lost here. You know what I yeah. mean? So by the time all of this story happens, Teresa shows up at Sam's place. It's kind of like, okay, why is she there? Is she there because he's the only person she can feels she can really trust? Because it's kind of been set up that she doesn't trust him. But she's kind of like, eh, I don't trust the police. I don't trust you. But, yo, I'm here. So can you help me with this story? And it's just like, is the story true? Like, let us know in the comments. Do you think what Teresa has said about Philippe showing up there? He had already been shot. Then all of a sudden this monk shows up like, is this story true? I feel like it's fishy. There are, I think, three different possibilities to what is going on here with Teresa. There's Okay, I have my tinfoil okay, hat yeah. on. Let's get into some theories. All right. So school of thought number one is that Teresa is telling the unabashed truth about what happened and you know theoretically that is possible however there's a couple of other elements to think about here mm -hmm. idea number two is that she is straight up lying and then the question of course is okay well why would she be straight up lying is she trying to protect whether it's philippe whether it is somebody else mm -hmm. who she may know and she doesn't want the true murderer or offender in this case to come out or there's possibility number three which to me this is the most interesting one is that Presumably here, Teresa will have gone through something that is immediately traumatic, and it's not as though her life has been easy to this point, mm -hmm. but when you go through something like this, which basically entails somebody showing up dressed as a monk, who I think you sort of ascribe this peaceful aura around, mm -hmm. this monk then gets physical with Mother Superior, which who is literally a mother figure to Teresa, I think at that point, you're witnessing something that is so awful that I think your perception of events can be a little bit twisted. Like, for example, is this monk really ugly? And I know this may sound silly, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, she's going to see this monk as ugly just because of what the monk actually does. And that's why I think like any physical descriptors of what this monk looked like, like this monk may appear, you know, bigger and more formidable in her mind than reality just because of what happened. So I think regardless of whether or not Teresa's actually telling the truth, I do think we have to shake just like a little bit of salt on her story because there's going to be a little bit of an unintentional bias there. Yeah, because one of the things that she didn't mention to Spade was that she either locked up the children, mm -hmm. somebody locked up the children, and she has the key to the children. So it's kind of like, who put them in there? Who locked the door? And if Teresa actually has the key on her, then she would know that. And if she doesn't actually have the key on her, and the kids think she has the key on her, then who actually has the key and who actually put them in there? Like, it feels like she's not giving the whole story. And I think some of it could come back to that phone call. Now, we know mm -hmm. that Sam and Philippe do not have a great history. It, 
it's not good all around they they don't like each other so yeah. i already worry that sam has sort of blinders on that he's like i just need to get Philippe, you know, he was trying to hold this thing over my wife and trying to like get money out of her and get all these things. Or he's going to expose these secrets. So he already is like, I don't like you. He has another past already with, you know, Bridget and everything with Philip. Like there's, it's really, really murky there. So when that phone call comes in and it's Philippe and he's like, listen, you know, just like back off, leave everything alone, leave me alone. All of a sudden you hear gunshots and everything that's going on. It sounds like somebody's getting shot. You don't know what's happening. And then Teresa shows up and is just like, oh yeah, my dad was shot and he showed up here. It's kind of like, okay, did he show up there or was he involved in what was going on with the nuns because they were all shot? I think the interesting idea about this part of the story is that if Presumably, Philippe was really shot. This is something that Sam should be able to figure out because wherever Teresa placed him, there should be blood somewhere else. Unless he is like a master at repairing his wounds on the fly, like this is not something that you're going to leave no evidence behind on. And this is something he, Sam also needs to remember here that if Philippe was shot, it's hard for me to then believe that, okay, Philippe then went put on a monk costume and then came right back. I think I'm I'm ruling out the leap as the person responsible for all of this right now. And this could be a huge cataclysmic mistake. It's just like, if I have just been shot, am I gonna really be able to go in there, take out all these nuns and then set up this, you know, you call it a tableau, this tableau yeah. that's going on there. It just feels that is very much a stretch if he was actually mm -hmm. shot. And, and for what reason? Like, what what would Philippe be going in there and, you know, killing all these nuns? What would the reason be if he is behind it? And that the gunshot that was heard was actually him, you know, doing this to these nuns. And was Teresa involved in some sort of way? I mean, both of her parents are thieves. Mm -hmm. And she is someone who was just left here at this convent. We don't know what her experience was like there probably not you know amazing probably not the worst who knows we don't know yet we're not that far in right yeah. but if your dad is coming back you know your mom is dead your dad's coming back grandma's coming back you might be more inclined to be like man anything is better than being here so if he shows up there and he's like hey you know manipulating the situation maybe manipulating her making her feel like she's part of something he's there to get her whatever it is like that could be it where it's like she doesn't know everything but she knows that he came there to maybe help her. And because he's in hiding, nobody knows where he is. Sam doesn't know where he is. Patrice, the, you know, the copper, he doesn't know where he is. No one can find him. If Teresa knows that, then Teresa might be like, okay, I need to make up this lie to be able to protect my dad because my dad has promised to take me with him. It is one of the most compelling stories that we have right now as possible theories, because there are a lot of different things we have to take into consideration here when it comes to Teresa's story that is being told. I mean, for starters, whoever is involved in this situation had to have been around the town for a little while because the monk that is described in Teresa's story, it is very closely resembling the monk that we briefly saw in the interaction with Sam and Patrice earlier on in the episode. Like I tried my best to pull out the magnifying glass <laughs> and that like brief frame where you saw a little bit of that monk's face. They did have a large nose. I'm not going to say it's like some abnormally large nose, but they did also have a very raspy voice when they said give and receive in French. So whoever is around, whether if, if this story is real, then Whoever was this monk, whether it be that actual monk, somebody pretending to be the monk, they were aware of what this monk looked and sounded like, or Teresa knew enough about this monk in order to make that all believable. I think that is a really big component in what is going on here. So whoever is responsible or involved in all of this has to have kind of a pretty keen understanding of the town. And Philippe just got there. So for me, once again... I kind of got to rule him out because he doesn't understand all of it. But Patrice, you mentioned Patrice. He mm -hmm. had a direct interaction with this monk. And, you know, he's a, he, he could be a large, foreboding individual. I think we have all seen plenty of stories over the course of the years where you have 
a person within the police system who is not what they claim to be. Like he is, mm -hmm. he's somebody we have to at least think about right now. I'm just hoping that the story's not about the money. And I actually don't think it is. I, I know that they've brought up the money and maybe the money's like a side plot, but it feels like they've introduced the money in such a large way so early on. And you know, this is Sam Spade. So you're going to get some red herrings. You're going to be led down a couple of like not truthful paths. Mm -hmm. So it feels like the idea that this is all about the money that, you know, Philippe went there to get Teresa, maybe he killed all the nuns to get her to get to the money. Like none of this feels <laughs> like that's where we're going. You know, like I said, Sam Spade, right? Like it's not going to be that simple. Is it time to put on the chef hat? Because I got to cook for a little oh, bit here. Oh, okay. All right. It's it's cooking time, everybody. All right. I've got tin. It's a tinfoil chef hat. I'm putting them oh. together. <laughs> because, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain my, my theory here as to what's going on. And it's, it is going to be roundabout. I will say that a little bit in advance. We don't have all the facts yet. So the real things that I'm thinking a lot about here are a really big clue is the tableau. Is the fact that whoever did this took the time to make sure it was presented in a very particular way. And to me, that's important because we were introduced to a number of interesting characters over the course of this episode. Jean-Pierre, somebody who has seemingly some not great tendencies, has a little bit of a temper, seems to be getting into it with Sam Spade already. We also met Marguerite. We understand a little bit of what's going on with their establishment. Mm -hmm. He does not seem to me he doesn't seem to be careful enough in order to stage something like this. Like He's messy. He's got the capacity, I would say, but at the same time, I don't think he is capable of that. If you were to argue that somebody is trying to frame him in some way because of his tendencies, I understand that. And if they were to stage the bodies, that's a little bit more sensible, but I'm not going down that direction as of right now. Like we met somebody else and Henri, mm -hmm. if I say that name correctly, oh, who is, yeah. Henri's digging a little bit into Philippe's past. But once again, I don't know if we know enough about Henri at this point to really consider him a prime suspect. But he's attached to Philippe in some way. You know, Sam has a task for him. That's the purpose for him to be on the show. Mm -hmm. What I am thinking about right now with this particular show in particular is who is there for a reason that doesn't seem natural. Who is there? And you're just kind of like, hmm, why are you here? Like, wh why are we taking the time with you in this episode? And I'm also thinking a lot about the Maltese Falcon, which admittedly, mm -hmm. I had never seen until a few days ago. So I am coming into this. Nice really and fresh. Nice and fresh, but also fairly ignorant about it until relatively recently. But one of the things that really struck me about the Maltese Falcon is so much of that story is a lot about the real killer being in plain sight and yes. you know what we end up seeing and learning about in regards to Bridget. And here we meet George Fitzsimmons, who is an artist, mm -hmm. who is somebody who shows up kind of out of the blue while Sam Spade is in the pool, ends up introducing himself, claims that he has a history with Gabrielle, who is, mm -hmm. you know, Sam Spade's <laughs> late wife, that, you know, she helped to take care of him. This is a story that cannot be verified because Gabrielle is not there. This character was also gone for a good period of time. It seems like he lives a relatively low-key life where he is around a lot of what is going on. So presumably this is somebody who would have seen the monk around town who would understand a little bit about that because he kind of puts on these airs, he could just be standing somewhere and painting. And we even saw that in this episode, that he's just sort of standing around. Watching. Yes. He is privy to, I think, a lot of discussions, a lot of information. There is a huge gap of time where we don't know what exactly was going on with this person. And it seems like this is not just like a crime of passion because every single one of those nuns was dead. So it feels like that, plus the imagery, that there is a message that is being sent here. And because there's such a mysterious air around this George character, and because of his artistic flair, this to me makes the most sense right now. I know there is a big question here when it comes to why in the world would this guy do this. I don't think we're meant to know that yet. I think there's information that's going to come out in these coming episodes, but he's so close to Sam that I don't think Sam is ever going to see him. 
Yeah, I think for me watching the show, when George showed up and was like, hey, you know, I used to be here and my dad was a painter. I, you know, I'm a painter. I'd like to paint on your land. Is that okay? And later it's like, hey, I'm just like, why is he here? Mm -hmm. Like, it felt very much like a sore thumb, just sort of in the story where I was just like, this character doesn't make any sense. There's so much that's going on. There are so many suspects. Everything is tied in. And then here comes painter George is just like, hey, do you mind if I do some painting here? Cool. Thank you. I was just like, for what reason? Probably because he's involved in some kind of way. And with the way the nuns were set up, almost like a tableau, an art, a piece of art, as you would, a morbid piece of art, is it possible then that it's George? Jo There's something that's really murky about him of why he's there. And through the whole flow of the episode, his part didn't flow and it didn't make any sense. And I was like, why is this here? It has to be here for a really good reason. And like you said, you know, Maltese Falcon killer in plain sight. It, it really would be a nice homage to the film if it was George. And if he's around and he's paying attention, he's, he's able to overhear things. He's very purposefully put himself around Sam Spade during a time that Sam is kind of investigating a bunch of different things. He's, you know, looking into Philippe and Jean-Pierre and all kinds of things that are going on. So if George is there, he's going to be able to hear everything that's kind of going on because I don't think that like necessarily Jean-Pierre or Philippe or any, any of the people that we've been introduced to don't have a hand in something to do with you know the nuns and the convent and the boy that we haven't seen yet but we've all seen in the trailer or Teresa it's all sort of connected to that place and if George is involved and all of these people have a hand in it then he needs to know what's going on and who's going to know what's going on Sam it's just it's a really intriguing thing to think about right now and to me I think this show is way better if we have already met the killer. Like, if the killer shows up in episode three or episode four, sure, they can make it work. But that's it's just not as interesting to me. Like, the, whoever did this needs to be strong and capable enough to win. You know, they're starting this awful spree that's going on at the convent that they're not able to be stopped. They had to have gone in there knowing exactly what their plan was. So this is somebody who is very deliberate and somebody who I don't think is necessarily acting based on emotion. I think they have a pretty clear plan as to what's happening here. I mean, we can't rule out, of course, a lot of other people that are amidst this story right now. Like there was somebody else with Patrice at the station. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, as Marguerite somehow involved in all of this. Like, I think there are a lot of different people. And then you're adding kind of on top of it, another a couple layers to this where you know sam kind of wins into this he doesn't really want to get back into this business like he is relaxing he is retired like that's all gonna sort of play in his mind mm -hmm. i think what happened with bridget is gonna play in his mind yes and then we also have this idea that it's not necessarily that he's dying but it is pretty clear that his past and his history is catching up to him okay we gotta talk about that smoking thing yeah it's this is my tinfoil hat theory mm -hmm. of why he all of a sudden has emphysema because uh, back in the day everyone was smoking it was cool and glamorous yeah. it was so ridiculous like but that's what it was at that time at the time of where we are in the show in that time period i feel like the 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 people behind the show yeah. know that Sam Spade would be smoking and so would everybody at this time period. And they didn't want to glamorize cigarette smoking in this show. So they gave him emphysema so that it was like he was always going to be kind of struggling with it. And he wasn't going to be. I mean, Sam Spade is so cool, right? <laughs> Not because he's smoking, but because he's Sam Spade. I mean, he's been played by Humphrey Bogart, one yeah. of the coolest people, you know, to ever be an actor. He was just so suave and so, you know, whatever, but he was also, you know, smoking and everything. And so was Sam Spade. So that's just my theory on it is they were like, we can't have Sam Spade in this time period not smoking. So how can we make it that he's not cool because he's smoking? Let's give him emphysema. 
clearly they didn't want him to be Don Draper and just sort of be, exactly. you know, lighting up all over the place. And and I get that. The, the biggest surprise to me with Monsieur Spade through what we've seen is I didn't expect it to actually be as connected to Maltese Falcon as it is. Like, I just sort of watched the movie on a whim thinking, oh, okay, it might be fun to kind of see it's it. such a good movie. If you yeah. guys haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's great. Yeah, it, it's a great movie. I, I just didn't necessarily expect all the connections in the way in which we got them. Like, I was admittedly kind of surprised to learn that in the world as presented in this show, that Bridget actually was only in prison for a pretty relatively short period of time all things considered i mean yes there were reasons behind all of that but mm -hmm. that was a very interesting choice because that was the only time i sort of felt like okay they're now they're actually really playing directly with the material of the maltese falcon and you know that film was so long ago that nobody involved in it can really give any sort of opinion or judgment on that one way or the other yeah i wasn't sure if there was going to be really much in a way of tying, I thought, you know, there might be kind of some sort of a mention of that case at some point. I mean, how could there not be? But I didn't expect it to be this much of a tie in where he's got Bridget's daughter that he's responsible for, yeah. for you know, bringing to France. I was like, this is this is a lot more involved than I thought. However, they did it in a way that if you haven't seen the Maltese Falcon, the name Bridget doesn't mean anything to you. And it doesn't matter because they've completely explained who she was. She was a thief. She was someone that he put away in jail. That is all correct. That all happened in the film. And you don't need to see the film to know that that has happened. They tell you on the show. This show through one episode is really the stuff that dreams are made of, everybody. Like, it is that. It is so good. It is so well acted. I love Clive Owen. Like, you know, we've I've made that very clear mm -hmm. in our murder at the end of the world discussions. But this show makes me feel like I'm playing L.A. Noir, which is like one of my favorite video games so of the past good. like 10 to 15 <laughs> years. Like I didn't grow up watching a lot of noir movies, but I love just the premise of here's a character, here's a murder, here's all the different suspects. You get to try to figure it out along with, uh, along with the show, along with every other viewer and along with Sam Spade. So we're going to be here all season long talking about everything with much your spade so hit that subscribe button guys so you don't miss any of our coverage there also we have live streams every week on patreon all about much your spade so be sure to check out that link in the description below and thank you to our patrons for your thank support you. we'll see you guys here next time